Okay, so the way that I'm going to present this is reductive and that's a tiny bit ridiculous, but hopefully it's engaging. Um, don't overwork the analogy though. I'm going to <laughs> present it as being a bit like a historical trajectory, which is, which is not really true. Anyway, here we go. Okay. <laughs> So hardly anyone remembers any models from the 60s, except for Twiggy. So she's here representing the information deficit model. The fundamental, um, well, the way I characterize what is fundamental about this model is that if you give people the truth, then they will make rational decisions about what they can do in order to reach an outcome that is in their own interest. So, um, the, the, the implication is that the lack of desired action, people don't act in their interests um, because they have a lack of information and the provision of accurate information will uh, lead to the desired action. For example, um, the dissemination of accurate information about the risks of smoking will inevitably lead to cessation. So, What's fundamental? What, what, what's important here is the concept of rationality. Um, you know, the idea that accurate information enables decisions that attain the optimal balance of costs and benefits. It, it's, it's probably it's important at this stage to um, point out that in rational choice theory, which is which is what I'm referring to here, which is like the fundamental um, a fundamental theory in classical economics. Rationality doesn't mean that people necessarily actually act like this. It, it instead means that people act as if they were balancing costs against benefits to arrive at an action that maximizes their personal advantage. Whether or not they were really doing that doesn't matter to economics because what's important is the accuracy of the prediction. What you care about is what comes out at the end. Okay, so, and, and, and you know, the, um, the Chicago's, um, th this, this model of economics comes from a um, branch of, of economics uh, broadly termed the Chicago School. And within that tradition, it was never claimed that the models were meant to represent reality. They were just simplifications whose role was as prediction. In order to make predictions about if you intervene in marks in particular ways, for example, these are the outcomes that you can, outcomes that are likely to happen. So, so the, some of the features of this model is that it doesn't investigate causes of behaviour, the, the um, psychological or sociological or physiological um, causes of behaviour. But another thing that is quite interesting about it, and then I'll come back to, is that it can this concept is um, easily consistent with the concept of rational autonomous citizens, which at least was and perhaps continues to be a fundamental value of liberal society.